leave out the one light because I can't bother to put up two. It's kind of blinding me a bit. Anyway, I'm probably like really shiny. Um, <laughs> hi, so I'm like a proper vlogger right now and um, thought I'd do a video rather than a blog of some of the stuff that I use when I was self catheterising. Um, I'm sure all vloggers talk about self catheterising. It's the end topic. Um, but yeah, I basically self catheterised from April to December last year. Yeah. Um, it felt like forever. <laughs> um, I personally did find it really painful and difficult, but that's partly due to the problem that I have. So my urethra goes in constant spasms and grips on for dear life, um, which makes it very hard to put a catheter in or out. Um, I got told by lots of urology nurses that I'm a dream to catheterise, apart from I have a very small urethra, but it's not actually a small urethra, it's actually just because it's so spasmy, basically. Um, so that for me made it very painful, but I know some people get on really well with self catheterising and literally do it for years. Um, some people can do it standing, like anywhere they go, they find it great. So this is just my, that was just my experience, that was very painful, so don't let it put you off. But then equally, if you're struggling, I struggled for a very long time before I actually admitted defeat. Well even though I didn't admit defeat, I got sent to hospital with 1,500 millilitres in my bladder and they put my penis in, aka indwelling catheter. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish looking back that I hadn't tried quite so hard just to stick with self catheterising because it obviously wasn't suiting me. But saying that, the first four months, five months when I was doing it, I had a quite a good run. I had no infections for a while because I was on top of my retention. But it was as my function decreased that I needed to use a catheter more often. Um, and then when I was catheterising, it wasn't fully emptying, so it caused infections and the cycle continued until I needed the catheter. So it wasn't all bad, it just was very hard for me and my function decreased as I progressed with the catheter. So I ended up having to catheterise beginnings sort of twice a day, morning and night, then maybe a third one midday if I hadn't fully emptied. Um, but then by the end of it, I was catheterising probably like six or seven times a day. And even when I was catheterising, I was getting out very little, so it was very hard and I still had that constant pressure to pee. But when it worked, and when I had good days, um, it was great. And I'll show you some of the standard stuff that I got sent from the NHS, as well as a few of the products that I personally found helpful at my setup of self catheterizing So first, we'll talk about um, my little setup. So I've already mentioned that some people can do catheterizing standing over a toilet. Um, I personally couldn't, again because of my spasms both in pelvic floor and urethral, so I went for sort of a lay back sitting like this position. Um, I sat on the floor and leant against the bath um, with my legs open, obviously, it's really attractive. Um, but because I wasn't over a toilet and if I didn't, one of the catheters I use had a bag attached but I tend to prefer the other type so a lot of the time I would use one of these, um, the standard hospital sick bowl. Uh, Mum and I just ordered like a hundred of these off Amazon, I think it was Amazon, um, and they are so useful for various sick bowls, pee bowls. I mean I don't know what else to use them for, Ma mainly sick and pee, but yeah, so that's what I used loads of. And of course you can just pee in there. What's really handy is it's got, um, you probably can't see, but it's got like little lines of a rough measurement of how many mils. So it was quite good to keep an eye on generally what was coming out versus in. Um, yeah, so we used those loads and of course you can recycle these, but they're pee, but you know what I mean. Um, mirror wise, mum got this, again I don't know where she found it, I think it might be been Amazon, but I'll check when I post this. But it's a really cool mirror, so it's, the top one is like a 10 times magnifier, don't ever look at that, you don't want to see your lady bits that close. Like. But the bottom one I use, and it's really good because you could angle it to how you wanted it, and you can also like lengthen it to get the right angle and it was really stable and stayed up and even had a light I mean you can't see that I've put it on because it's um I probably just blinded you there uh because it's um light but yeah so that was really good and I really love this mirror it was my favorite one I have various others for traveling but I'll get into that later um but yeah that was my best mirror for home um I tended to sit on a pee mat so again I got these free whenever I order catheters I just ask for like the bed mat, pee mat thing, um, 
and they're really useful because if you sit on them and were like me and had accidental dribbles and generally a really clumsy person, it soaks up all the key really easily and it's also a bit nice than just sitting on the floor. If I was travelling, which I didn't often try and self catheterise when I was out because again I had to sit, but I would take these wherever I went because it just made whatever I was sitting on one more like sterile and two um, slightly nice and on the floor of various bathrooms. So yeah, and also they're useful. I didn't have incontinence at the time, but now before my latest catheter I did, so I also found it useful for peace of mind and things like that in bed. Um, wipes, so from different companies I got sent different main wipes. So these were like my favourite for ages, they're um, like a sterilised wipe, I don't know why that's all weird. Um, but yeah, they were fine, but then I thought they were being a bit rough, like a bit too harsh on my skin. Um, so another company sent me these, just like standard normal wet wipes like hypoallergenic and then sometimes if I run out of things I would just use like standard sort of fem fresh feminine wipes because it's not you're not trying to get a super sterile environment like you are in hospital like obviously you want it to be super clean um, but it didn't really matter what wipe I use I never had an infection from actually self catheterizing so I guess people are different it's about choosing what works for you um, I also used to say yes when they'd say, do you want to send wet dry wipes as well? Because often catheter companies would send you these. They're like a, um, kind of like a weird tissue -y thing. They're a bit softer than just plain tissues. You can wet them and use them as like another wet wipe, or you can use them dry to dry up. Um, if you use any of the gels, which I'll talk about, they're also handy for that, and just general spillage is handy. So yeah, on the NHS you get those free, but I guess it's different if you're watching this for everyone in the world. Um, again, disposable bag, so um, I'd have one of these open from the beginning before I wash my hands. So I set all this up before I wash my hands. Um, and yeah, just, you need a fairly big bag because you end up quite a lot of stuff. I would say catheterism or general healthcare stuff isn't the best for recycling and environmentally friendly things because you just can't, you just can't, it's really hard. Um, but yeah, so I use these. Um, hand sanitizers. So I, I do obviously. So once I set my like set up up, I then do a proper wash of my hands. Um, but then if I sort of touch anything else, then I will use hand sanitizers throughout. You often get sent some through from the companies. They give away like three things. This is my favourite one. I've used. I'm sorry, like I'm a pro at hand sanitizers. Of different ones that absorb the fastest, don't smell, but also like don't aren't sticky. Um, this is my favourite at the moment. So yeah, just like share. Um, and then, so, mostly I would go in catheters, so, catheters I should do, <laughs> the most important one. These are the three main ones that I preferred. Um, I generally was a size 8, I think it's like CH, CH8, yeah, but sometimes like this one didn't come in that, so this is a CH10. Um, so that's pretty small, I think it is nearly the smallest apart from going kids. Um, but these all come, like mo I'd say most catheters from my experience that I've used come sort of pre-lubricated, lubricate is that right? I'm sure it does say that. Anyway, they kind of come like in the packet, there's like, you can see that on CD, you can see it's like kind of wet. Um, but if you want extra lubricate, lubrication, um, I got sent this lubricating jelly from one of the companies. As you can tell, it's basically full. I didn't really use it because for me, I found it made no difference at all to what how I catheterized. Um, I would use it occasionally, um, but it more just made a mess. But there are things there to help you. This is kind of gross because it's open. Um, but my um, urology nurse would give me these, and they are a lub sterile lubricating jelly, um, and they've got a local anaesthetic and antiseptic in. So they're apparently meant to help numb the pain slightly, but. And they sort of come like this, which is what you never would use. It would be so wasteful because you would never use the whole thing. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to use this. This is to go in the bin. I don't know why I still have this in my pot. Um, but yeah, so you can ask your nurses for things like this if you need more help. But, uh, the main thing I've learned with catheters in general is that if you don't ask or ask the companies that provide your products or ask nurses, you don't know what's out there because I just you just make do with what you get given. And it was only till a few months down the line I realised I could ask for different types of catheters. Like I just accepted the first one they gave me. Um, so yeah, catheters. So my absolute favourite was the low frick one. 
um, because it had a little sticky bit at the back so you'd open the first thing first this would do when I'd sort of wash my hands but before I get really sterile and then I'd stick that on the bath like just here and so it would be really easy to grab it when you have clean hands just take it out um, I'll take it out now and as you can see it's kind of like wet on the end um, and obviously you stick it in and it comes out that hole so it's really easy to hold I didn't get pee on my fingers <laughs> all the vital things um, and they were like just quite neat and compact um, I then got a different like brand to try um, these are the Actree Minis um, and it's very similar although it hasn't got a sticky bit on the back which is why I prefer the purple one but you just rip it open pull that out and then it's like this and again it's like pre-loop um, I found this one a bit fiddly, I don't know, I don't, never like this one as much as the purple. If I was just doing straight calf into the, my pee ball, I would use the purple one. Oh, oh just dropped on me. Ah, so I've got lubricating jelly down me now. I've been covered in much worse. Um, and then finally, these are my, were kind of my favourite travel ones because um, they were wrapped up like this and then you open the back and it actually comes with a bag attached to the catheter. So this catheter is basically the same as that, the other actually mini one. Um, it's in this little sterile bit, you'd rip it open and put it in as normal, but as you pee, you'd pee straight into a bag. So it was good if you didn't have loads of stuff with you or weren't by a toilet. Um, I have tried to use this in the car before. Um, it was tough, it was tricky. Um, and also not very nice for the driver. It was a driver I knew, obviously. <laughs> um, and it measures really well. So if you want to be really precise with how much you're actually peeing out, I found this really good. So I kind of use a combo, but this was a size 10, so it was a bit bigger. They didn't do this apparently in a size 8. So that's why I tend to go for the purple one, because that was, I mean, it's still uncomfortable, but it's a bit smaller, as small as possible. So yeah, they were the catheters the most. Um, and I've talked a bit about travel already, but often when you get catheters, they get, you get sent little accessories. So I got sent these two bags. This is like pathetic, only fits like two catheters in. I guess it's kind of neat. This one's quite good because it fits most stuff in. So this would be my kind of travel bag I take with me. I had this as my portable mirror, so it still stood up on its own. Um, I mean, it's not that portable, it's quite big, but it was quite good. So that was that. I had a mini set of like disposal bags because I used to always forget those and you'd be shoving catheters in like someone's bin that you're staying at the house at and it was never that nice for them I'm sure. Um, I had feminine wipes so I just used to get small packets of things um, like from any normal pharmacy. Just more portable, hand sanitizer. I'd normally put in either a box, like a box of tissues, a pack of tissues or some of the dry wipes just because handy. And then I'd put in a collection of catheters, depending on how many I would go be needing that day. Um, so mostly I said I preferred those, but they were quite good for travelling. And that's what I'd take. So yeah, I think I've covered most things. Um, I think my general tips for self catheterising is that it feels, or it can feel, super overwhelming. You think I'll never be able to do it. Um, and also you don't really want to do it. Like it's not something you're like, yay, I'd love to learn to self catheterise. Um, I know when I first, I'd had catheters quite a lot when I first started doing it, so though I was used to being catheterised at that point, I mean, as much as you ever get used to being catheterised, um, I still, when I watched the first video um, online, like a classic like cartoon thing telling you how to do it, I still found watching that really, like, ooh. I was fine to a bit like, now put it in, I was like, ooh, no. Um, but when you start doing it, it's really not that bad. When I first watched the video again, it said, you know, make sure you don't get in your vagina, it's a different hole. And I was like, oh, of course, like, who would be stupid enough to put it in their vagina? I did. <laughs> Numerous times. It's actually much harder than you think. You look on a diagram, you're like, oh yeah, the three holes. And then you look down your eyes and you're like... So that's completely normal too. Um, even in the first few days, weeks, I would have probably a 75% success rate of catheterising, like it did take me a long time before I could just easily self catheterise. Um, I think it's because your body is, well my body particularly was in a lot of pain when I did it, so it's almost like your body's fighting you which doesn't help. Um, but yeah, once I got in a routine of it, I got all the stuff I needed, I used to have these two little white boxes in the bathroom like all set up so when I would go there, whatever time of day, 
um, it would just be really quick to get things out, get ready, wash hands and do it. Um, if it was a good catheterisation and I wasn't too spasmy, it could be done in like 5-10 minutes. If it was a bad one, I'd come out of the bathroom several hours later, probably in tears. Um, but again, I don't want to put people off, but I also want to be honest with my experience of it. I think doctors particularly put a lot of um, emphasis that self-catheterising is way better for you than any other type of catheter. And I completely see their point. It's a way of not having a tube constantly in you with just drawing bacteria into you the whole time. Um, but my reply to that when they do say things like that is, have you ever tried self-catheterising six, seven times a day? No? Okay then, well, like, I'm not going to take your judgement then, because I have and I know how difficult that can be. Um, obviously, if you can survive on self-catheterising and not need anything else, then amazing. But if you're struggling, like I did for quite a long time, like, don't feel like a failure. I felt like such a failure for failing to continue self-catheterising and need an indwelling catheter. Um, it took me quite a few months afterwards to accept, actually it wasn't my fault, because um, it's not your fault. Um, it's not a complete, like if you tell someone you're self-catheterising, they're like, what? So in the normal world, it's not normal, but in our chronic illness world, it's quite like a casual thing to throw about, about self-catheterising, like it's something easy. So. so yeah, anyway, I hope this video has been of help, even if it just helps one person. I know when I first did it, apart from doing videos online and reading like the leaflet you get from the NHS, um, it doesn't really give you many tips of actually day-to-day -day life for self-catheterising. Um, so yeah, hope this has helped. And um, please do mess with me with any questions. I know I'm slightly rubbish at my DMs at times, um, but I try as much as possible to get through them and I will answer any questions. I'm perfectly happy talking about it. Anything from embarrassing to, yeah, whatever. Okay, bye.